Hi guys, this is Jenny Lyles and I am going to talk today on the purely political side of things. So this is my very first purely political podcast, or I mean videocast. As you can see, I'm knitting while I'm talking to you. Fortunately, this is an easy pattern to do because it's a little hard to see through the video recording. Um, I want to talk a little today about what politics is. Politics is the creation of policy that governs a community of any size. So we can talk about a community of three or four families. We can talk about a community of roommates within an apartment. We can talk about the community of a town or a city or a state or a country or the world. That is what politics is. With that said, there is an old feminist adage that says that the personal is political. And that is absolutely true. My friend L.M. Kate Johnston, who lives far away from me, says she has a friend who teaches at the college level. And very early in the semester, in one of her classes, she challenges the students in her class to come up with an issue, an object, or a service that is not in some way tied to policy at some level. And the students typically start pretty cocky and pretty sure that they can come up with a way to uh, demonstrate that not everything is political. And within about 30 minutes, they are much quieter and much more ready to learn. Now, I wanted to do a much shorter description, or I should say demonstration, of that. And I thought I'd take on two or three things from when I posted this question on my Facebook a few days ago. I had some suggestions as to what might be political topics that people don't think of as political topics. The first one is one of my favorites, and that's chocolate. And I really like chocolate. Um, chocolate. Chocolate, however, is a very political issue in a couple of different ways. First of all, the definition of chocolate is defined by various governments in different ways. Um, with regard to the amount of the cocoa plant that must be in the final product, with uh, regard to what other ingredients can be mixed with it, and things like that. Um, that is a pretty common way to, uh, for a government to step in on chocolate. Another way is that the production of government is a highly labor-intensive pro process. Um, the beans must be harvested. They are then fermented and then dried, and this is typically done um, in a fairly natural setting. Uh, chocolate is grown in tropic areas only, for the most part, and the people who harvest and produce chocolate are very frequently people who can't afford to eat chocolate and don't understand the big deal of why this plant that they don't use much is so valuable. A piece of this is that uh, the people who labor to make chocolate are frequently underpaid and are often essentially or actually slaves. And we have seen some governments throughout the world address this through labeling of how chocolate was produced. Others have addressed it by directing requirements for chocolate in their country based on uh, how the people who are producing the chocolate is created, is, 
are treated, sorry, and various things like that. So yes, chocolate is very political. And then you add things like, well, is it vegan chocolate or is it uh, chocolate that has milk added? Um, and there are laws in every country that determine what vegan means. Um, there are standards to dairy production that go into that. You see where I'm going here. Chocolate has a lot of political aspects to it. My husband thought he got me because he said dog toenail clippers. And he's like, that can't possibly be political. But uh, dogs have been companion animals to humans since we built the first campfires and had meat left over from dinner. And so, uh, because there are companion animals, we have all kinds of rules around how we treat dogs, how we um, allow our dogs to treat other humans, and both of those things apply to dog toenail clippers. Now, when you look at a dog toenail clipper, it is designed typically in a way that makes it more difficult to accidentally cut the dog while trimming their toenail. And then we need to ask the question, why the dog's toenail is trimmed at all? Um, many of our dogs are bred now as indoor dogs that never get out and dig in a backyard or um, chase deer or rend animals with their claws. So their toenails don't naturally get worn down like the toenails of a wild dog or a coyote or wolf would. So they need toenail clippers because we have changed their environments. And part of the reason we have changed our environments is because of local, city, state, and national ordinances regarding dogs. Um, they have to be kept contained and other humans need to be protected from them. They have to be kept groomed or the dog will be taken away and given to a new owner. There are laws around this. Laws are politics. So yes, there is definitely a political component to dog toenail clippers. Finally, I wanted to talk a little bit about, hi. Since I'm knitting, how about yarn? What's political about yarn? Well, we have a lot of regulations going into how you define a yarn thickness, the yarn content. Um, right now I am knitting with a single ply woolen yarn that is actually what's called superwash which means it's been treated with chemicals in such a way that this particular wool won't shrink. Um, I ordered it by mail and I am using a leather thimble. Now some of you with some imagination can probably come up with a dozen different political issues just with that information alone. Wool is itself a major political issue. We're looking at how do we maintain the sheep? How do we maintain the land that the sheep are grazed on? What about the chemical bath that creates the superwash? And what about the mail system that got this yarn to me in within 48 hours after I ordered it from wherever it was produced? If I'm not mistaken, this yarn was made by nitpicks.com, which is a wonderful organization, and um, trying to remember the name of the type of yarn it is. I know the colorway is Vermont, but I can't remember the name of the yarn itself. Um, I do know that um, most of Nitpicks yarn is produced in the United States, but I am not sure about this particular uh, style of yarn. So, there's regulations that go into defining what wool is and superwash wool is. There are regulations as to the safety of the chemicals used in the superwash wool into the chemicals 
that the sheep that produce the wool can be treated with and the way they can be cared for in general. There are regulations that go into the making of the knitting needles I'm using, which are a product made with metal, wood, and plastic, um, and how they can be described publicly. Um, I use a leather thimble because my knitting method has a tendency to hurt. Oops, I have to step back a second here. I forgot something. So I'll let you see me making a mistake and then going back and fixing it. Oops, I took it off camera. Sorry about that. I was supposed to add a stitch there. Another regulation is that the wool has to be provided in such a way that it is suitable for what it's advertised to be suitable for. Because this is online, that's even more important because I can't touch it before I use it. I have to order it and then hope that Knit Picks is a reliable organization, which of course they are, or I wouldn't keep ordering their stuff. My needles and uh, I don't have any today, but my needles and my uh, stitch counters are also from Knit Picks. Um, but yeah, there's political aspects to knitting as well. Now, knitting actually has a significant uh, political history. Um, it has been predominantly a woman's occupation for hundreds of years, if not thousands. I think the uh, first knitted goods that have been discovered go back to the late Roman period. I could be wrong about the exact period, but I do know it goes past the Middle Ages. Um, and women have historically knitted socially in groups. And when they knit, um, they're also thinking. Knitting is a very... Um, mathematical hobby. It uh, requires a great deal of skill. This particular pattern that I'm working right now is a very, very simple garter stitch uh, headband or scarf or tie. Um, I haven't quite decided what it is. But in e any of those cases, it is a an item that will be useful to me and possibly to somebody if I want to sell it. Now, if I choose to sell it, there's another political piece to it because I have to charge taxes to the person that I'm selling to and I have to pass those taxes along to the government. Now, I don't intend to sell this particular one. This particular one is because I'm, my hair is growing out and I am making headbands in order to be able to tie back my hair so that it's not in my way as it grows out. But before I get done with all this, I'm just going to leave you with this idea. Uh, everything has a political component. Everything affects a community in some way or another. Um, whether you're dealing with knitting, whether you're dealing with dogs, whether you're dealing with chocolate, shoes, thimbles, clothes, hair. It's all political. There are political components to it. There are laws, there are regulations, there are mores that go to these things. Purely political addresses how some of those things affect us with regard to our mental health and how our mental health can affect our ability to work within political systems. Um, now that you've seen my purpose, I hope that you'll join me when I do these purely political podcasts, as well as the Out of My Mind video and podcasts. Uh, my Patreon is at patreon.com backslash J-L-I-L-E-S. And I hope that you will tune in again th soon. Thank you very much.